The first phyla of animals that we're going to talk about is phylum periphera, which is the sponges. And the word periphera um, starts with P-O-R, which looks like the word pore. And so hopefully you know what a pore is. We have pores in our skin. Um, and so sponges are full of holes. They're full of pores. Now, what else do we know about this particular phylum? And you do need to make sure that you know the phylum names for each for each one of these phyla that we're studying. So I should probably have that written up here too. So phylum periphera is what the sponges are in. They do not have any symmetry. And I think I actually mentioned that yesterday when I was talking about the different types of symmetry that are in these, in a lot of these animals. Sponges don't have any symmetry at all. There's no way to cut them in half and make, make the two halves look the same. If you look at a sponge, there's kind of growths kind of going everywhere on a sponge. They do have two methods of support. They can either have spicules, which are, are hard, or they can have spongin, which is more soft. But both of those do provide um, support for the sponge. And I did give you a video link showing you some of the different shapes of all these different kinds of spicules. And the reason I mention it is that when you do your lab, you are going to be asked to draw the shapes of the spicules that you're seeing in your particular sample. I have gotten labs before from students where they um, show me all different kinds of shapes of spicules. And what is the case is that whatever uh, slide you're looking at, you should really only be able to see one shape of spicule because each shape of spicule is unique to that particular type of sponge. So when you do your lab, I just want you to keep in mind that when you're looking for shapes of spicules, you really should only see one shape in whatever um, sponge that you're looking at. Okay. I do want to talk a bit about the feeding of sponges because I, it's, to me it's fascinating how it works. I did give you a coloring sheet which is going to show you the water flow through the sponge. And one of the videos that I linked you to also will show you how this works. Sponges will draw water in from the bottom and pump it up through and out the tops of the sponge like this. And they they manage to beat that water through them with little cells that have flagella on them. Now, the gentleman in the video actually puts in some, some dye that does not harm the sponges. And so you can actually see when he squirts the dye down here, you can see how that water gets pumped through the sponge and then comes out the top. Well, why do they do that? Because when they do that, there are little pieces of plankton and microorganisms and all kinds of organic debris that's in that water. And then the sponge will actually take that in and eat it. Now, even though a sponge may look like a plant, it is very much an animal. So if I take, if this is the picture of my sponge and I take a picture right here of the side of the sponge, the inside of it is hollow. And the side of, this, of the wall of this sponge is going to look like this. I took it and I blew it up. So there are two layers. You have an epidermis, which is on the outside of the sponge. And you have an endodermis, which is on the inside of the sponge. In between is called a layer called the mesenchyme. The endodermis is made up of a lot of collar cells. And your book mentions the collar cells, but she doesn't really talk a lot about what the structure looks like. So I tried to, again, blow it up, and you can see it on your coloring sheet too, how, what these um, little collar cells actually look like. So they're a cell that has a collar right around here. It looks like, like the collar on a shirt, like this is the head and this is the tail. So it looks like a collar. And these flagella beat back and forth, like we've talked about the movement of a flagella before. And so the water gets pumped through, and as a piece of food comes by here, it gets trapped in this collar. And then it, it's going to work its way through this, through here. This, the cell will manage to get um, that piece of food worked back. And then you have amoebocytes. Um, who It's another type of cell. It's not a separate creature. But this, uh, we talked about amoebas. Um, and so these are named amoebocytes because they look like those amoebas, but these are cells of the sponge. And these amoebocytes work their way in between the endodermis and the epidermis, picking up pieces of food and taking it to other parts of the sponge where it's needed. They will take um, oxygen and they'll take it to where it's needed. They'll pick up 
um, waste gases and waste from the food. They'll pick that up and they will get rid of it. And because this is so thin, all of this can happen via diffusion. It's not like they really have a circulatory system or a respiratory system. There's no kind of, of nerve, so there's no nervous system. Um, it's, it's a very, very thin layer, and so all of this happens just through diffusion, okay? And so the amoebocytes are responsible for carrying everything through um, the mesenchyme and getting everything um, either where it's needed or getting rid of the waste. Cell, um, Sponges will reproduce both asexually by budding. And what budding means is that they grow another little piece kind of out here to the side, and then eventually that piece will separate off and plant and become its own, its own creature. So if that happens, obviously, because this is just grown off of, of the same animal, both of these are going to be um, identical genetically to each other, but sponges also have the characteristic of being hermaphroditic. And I'll go ahead and write that word up here. You actually won't see it in your book, if I can spell it and talk at the same time. Uh, you actually won't see this in your book until a little bit later, but the same term um, works for sponges as well as for earthworms, which I believe is when she actually, um, she actually, introduces the term hermaphroditic to you. What a hermaphroditic animal is, it means that it has both sperm and egg. It produces both. Now, sometimes hermaphroditic creatures can reproduce with themselves and sometimes they cannot. Um, again, in the video that I link you to, you will see uh, the sponge releasing sperm cells. There are eggs that can be in, into the mesenchyme in a, in a different sponge. And so then the sperm will end up with another sponge and then they will make, uh, they will fuse and then they will make another new sponge that way. Um, you can also see how, um, after they've been fertilized, how the sponge can release those out the top of its, um, the top of itself as well. So it's very fascinating. So make sure that you check that video out. So those are the main uh, characteristics of sponges. Again, you will not be expected to know all the nitty gritty details. I do expect you to know what a collar cell is and what it does, um, to know that they don't have any symmetry, to know what they're used for support. Um, and so those are the types of things that you're gonna need to know about a sponge.